Yo, what is up guys? It is Small back again with another Epic 7 video for you guys today. And today we're going to be talking about the unit you see on your screen here, Adventure Ross. Now before we get started with the video though guys, if you guys are not already subscribed to the channel, you guys want to get updates when I have videos like this released talking about units, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button to get those updates. Now that being said, let's talk about Adventure Ross. So Adventure Ross is the specialty changed form of the main character Ross and let's just say it is a huge upgrade to the main character. If you use Ross at the start of the game, you probably are going to come to realize that he is a very weak unit, but once you actually specialty change him through his skill tree upgrades and you know the changes to some of his skills, he's actually really 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 strong. Now with the new changes to his skill tree, he actually is really powerful in PvP now, probably the best knight in PvP in the current state, but in PvE, he's still probably the best knight as well. So he's basically the best knight in both PvE and PvP right now, so which is a huge reason into why you actually want to build him. Now for PvE, he's basically used everywhere you need a knight. You can use him in Abyss, Labyrinth, Hell Raid, uh, Earth Expedition, Golem, Dark Expedition, Light Expedition, Azumarill. There's so many areas of content you can use him. And in PvP, guess what? Yeah, you can use him everywhere as well. You can use him on defense teams, offense teams for both Guild Wars and Arena. And he's a top tier pick now in World Arena. He's just really powerful. So that being said, why is he so good? So let's look at his skills real quick and you'll probably understand. You guys probably already know what he does, but let's just glance over real quick. So his S3 is a heal for himself and a defense buff to his entire team. Defense buff is one of the best buffs in the game. Obviously it mitigates damage for your team and just having damage mitigation for your team as a knight when you can also hold an Aureus artifact makes it so you can prevent your team from taking a lot of damage. His S2 is one of the most broken skills in the game guys for a knight. It is a forced dual attack meaning you'll bring, a, bring your ally with the highest attack and this has a chance to defense break once you actually go into his skill tree. Before you specialty change him guys, this skill is kind of whatever but since this has a chance to defense break, in PvE it's really decent and in PvP it's extremely broken because if you land that defense break on any unit even a tank unit you're gonna do a ton of damage if you land this on a damage dealer or a squishy unit then you're gonna get one shot and the most broken thing about this is since battle frenzy got changed in world arena where it the fights take a little bit longer now you can actually stack a lot of souls more easily and you're gonna see that the soul burn effect of this only cost 10 souls and it makes it so that this has no cooldown so in longer fights you just stack a lot of souls adventure ross you know every time he takes a turn he's just bringing his damage dealing unit with him and he has a chance to defense break for them so it's really strong it basically makes him like another pseudo damage dealer because of the fact that he can always bring his um damage dealer with the highest attack with him s1 really broken s1 it has a 75 percent chance to dispel which is very very high for a three-star unit and just having that chance to dispel against units that have a lot of buffs in the meta like para ran you see a lot um just like even fcc barriers huayang barriers just makes it really really strong now very powerful unit guys why is he so strong now in pvp what was the big change so if you look in his skill tree here this was a buff that you know a lot of people thought would be really broken and surprise surprise it made him really broken in pvp you can see the solitude rune the solitude rune if you guys read the text here basically whenever your ally that you place in the back row suffers a single target attack that does 30 percent or more of their max hp you will give them a barrier for two turns now this barrier strength is equivalent to 40 percent of a ross's or adventure ross's max hp but this can only activate once per battle now usually this barrier guys is going to be about 10k hp right if you stack your adventure ross with a decent amount of hp and for two turns that unit is basically unkillable now, of course, you can say, oh, you can strip it or put him buffable. Yes, but the fact that you have to play around this barrier this entire time is just really annoying. And the fact that you don't even know how tanky the unit in the backline will be if you will actually proc the barrier or not just makes it just like a mental mind game. So it's really, really annoying to deal with. And that just propelled him into the top night spot because he has so much mitigation already in his kit with his S3 and his Aureus, his offensive pressure with his S2, and in longer fights, since Battle Frenzy got changed, with his S2, he gets even more stronger than other knights, and the fact that he actually has that barrier now to prevent one-shot shenanigans on your on your backline makes him an S-tier pick in PvP. You, you'll see him everywhere now. He is going to be in Arena, like I said, and Guild Wars, World Arena, he's just super OP. Definitely want to build him. 
Now this is really good for the game because he's a very easily accessible unit. After I'd say like within a month of playing you can get his specialty change unlocked and also you can build him for PvE and use him in PvP. Since he is a knight guys, the stat guidelines I'm about to give you very soon, they are very flexible. Honestly, you just need him to be tanky and not be super slow and you're good to go. The other stats that I mentioned are just going to be, you know, kind of like bonuses. But these are the preferred stats that I'm going to talk about for PvP if you want to play in the high end, about like champion plus. So for artifact, there's only one choice. It is Aureus. This, this artifact is just a staple on knights. Now in the past, before his buff, you saw him a lot on Rise of Monarch. But since he already grants that two turn barrier, you actually don't need this anymore. And the barriers don't stack anyways. So Rise of Monarch, not really viable anymore. Just run him on a plus 30 Aureus for even more mitigation for your team. For set, it should be pretty obvious. Every single knight in the game is going to be going to be to want, going to want to be on a speed set for the most part. And Aeros is no different. You want him to be on speed set because you want him to take a lot of turns, right? S2 is very powerful. You want him to take a lot of turns. And if you get, if you can get like two S3s off in a world arena battle, you're pretty much good to go. You're going to pretty much win that game. So yeah, speed set for sure. Secondary set, I recommend HP or Efrez, preferably HP because his barrier does scale with HP, but Efrez is fine as well. You don't want him to get CC later on into the fight when effectiveness scaling goes up because yeah, you want him to take turns. He's just super strong. So yeah, those are the sets you guys want to run him on. For stats, guys, just run him on around 200 speed. My Aeros is honestly a little bit fast. Most Aerosses you see nowadays in PvP are going to be around 200 speed, about 100% effect resist, and then everything into HP. You'll see like 30k HP Aerosses. But for me, I found that the barrier when I was at 30k HP was a little bit overkill. So I actually dropped his HP and gave him more speed and a little bit more effect resist because in longer fights, yeah, I don't want him yet CC'd um, as much or crowd controlled as much. So I did drop his HP for other stats. So it's really up to you. Um, but as honestly, as long as you're above 200 speed, you're around 100% effect resist, and then everything else is in the HP, you're good to go. For defense, guys, you still want some defense on him. Aim for around 1500 so he doesn't get one shot by, you know, units that scale with uh, HP like Huayang, right? So stuff like that. So yeah, definitely good unit, guys. Definitely recommend building. He's very easily accessible. I think Smilegate did a wonderful job in buffing him. I think whenever Aeros is like super strong in the meta, it's really healthy for the game um, because just having free to play units at the top of the tier list, even you know, bypassing ML5s is just really healthy for the game because it makes PvP a lot more accessible for newer players and even mid game players. And you just have a lot more players playing PvP because, you know, they actually have good units, right? So I think, you know, how Smilegate is going with the meta is really good because they're kind of trying to phase out the ML5 stars now and trying to add more, you know, free to play units like Adventure Ross, right? Even DN is really good, right? Stuff like that. So I think Smilegate is doing a wonderful job with changing the meta. And I think we have to give them some props for that. Adventure Ross, guys, definitely a must build. He's super, super OP. Like, I cannot stress enough. Sure, there's some counters, right, into him, but, you know, you can always run Crow into him. But even if Crow comes into the meta because of Aeros, that's really good because Crow's another pretty much free to play unit. So, yeah, Aeros, build him ASAP. If you guys, you know, have him um, built on a PvE build, switch him to a PvP build and find a replacement for him in PvE or, you know, run him in both because. Yeah, he's just so broken, guys. I cannot get over how powerful he is in PvP right now, and I'm very happy that he's good because he's one of my most favorite units to use. That being said, guys, if you guys want to see more videos like this, especially ones about PvP, then let me let me know in the comments down below, and also make sure you hit that like button. See you guys next video, and have a great week. Peace.